Okay. This should be interesting. Uh, guys, welcome to the first live tutorials. How are you? Uh, yeah. So we're doing eyes. I don't know if we have enough to fill um, an hour, enough material, I mean enough dissecting of the eyes to fill an hour, but we'll try. And also, um, I mean, if you do painting of the eyes too, right? We'll do the morphology, uh, morphology, you know, we'll do the, the, we'll deconstruct the eye as much as we can and we'll go to painting, okay? And then maybe it will help everyone. Hi everyone, how are you? Oh matter, thank you so much for the reset. Thank you, thank you. There's there's gonna be no pop-ups right now because of this thing is gonna go on YouTube. And the music, there's gonna be no song requests just for the first hour because this is gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> so there we go. I only managed to download a few songs before the website crashed and I checked their songs uh, for videos so I can post them. It's good, it's good. It's good. Joheck, thank you so much. Look, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's no pop-ups right now. I'm sorry. But let's get to it. We can do this. It can be pretty good, I think. Let's do eyes. Let's understand eyes, okay? Cool. Let me just move this for a second. Cool. Cool. Okay. Let's make a group, just in case. Let's just understand the basics of eyes, guys. Um... Let's do a color like a fleshier color, more like orange, I think, maybe a brown. Mm, very saturated, maybe a redder tint. Mm, that's what I'd go for, I think. Anyway. Yeah, understanding an eye, uh, it's 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 quite a lot simpler if you go, if you start at least envisioning a circle. This is a full frontal view, right? Oh, so uh, and then build upon it you can see this is from the front the upper eyelid should always go over the lower eyelid see it like wraps over it and here I mean sometimes this goes over like that right sometimes this the inner tear duct is very um, not visible but usually you have something along the lines of this and you can see exactly if you if you start at least envisioning a certain the, the eyeball you will see that it's very easy to know where to shade and where to add the crease there you go it's like it disappeared you know it's like there's nothing even to, to you know work with i mean you don't need to like overcomplicate it too much at this point you know exactly where to shade okay hi kumari how are you any questions? Uh, I can do it for. I will do it for from the profile and three quarters and all of that. Let me just do the iris. And then starting again the same way with the eyeball. Frap, sir. You should put this song a bit more low, of course. There we go, let's do it. I hope that's better. And from the profile, you would have to start with the also there's a plane here, you know, the waterline. There's like think of it as the thickness of the lid, right? It goes like this here. It also you also see it from on the upper lid but you will see it more if you look from below right okay cool I didn't I didn't know but hopefully it's fine now the music from the um, from pro the profile it does really help to start with that inner uh, with our waterline plane that we were discussing and you would since it's from the profile this eye you will see a lot more of the inner tear duct um, waterline so to speak and a lot less of the ones that think of it as uh, one of those domes like that like that think of it like that this is what you see 
This you see a bit less of. This is dependent on the of the eyeball itself. But yeah, that should help. And uh, yeah, and then you can place the tear duct. It's usually here in between the um, eyelid and the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. It's better, right? The music. Do tell me, guys. Do tell me. And then. Like that, see? Oh, okay. Wait, one second. And the upper eyelid will still envelop, go over the lower eyelid. And you will see a bit less of the uh, waterline of the inner eyelid. Especially if the eye is um, like um, almond, you know, and it goes up at the end. If it goes down, you will see a bit more of the lower. See, if it goes down like this, you will see more of this. Here, and then the inner tear duct. And then, off this, you can just build the, build the lid, see? And then lower the lid. And obviously the lower lid doesn't have as much of a sunken, um, doesn't give as much of a sunken impression. So you could just... Like that. And the eyelashes are usually, you know, not in the, not, they don't start on the waterline for the record, right? I always try tend to make this in inner, um, waterline a bit darker but sometimes um, a lot of the times it's lighter but yeah it helps me if i start making it darker it helps me understand the shape of it you know see it becomes very apparent where the eyeball is if you start with it hi guys i assume this would go good further down but overall if you do start with the circle it will tell you where to shade see let's let's go with this one let's add the iris and as you can see it's it's pretty easy at this point to build the rest of the um, eyelids okay Look, you don't necessarily have to shade from here, but you could. It's a very good indicator of where to shade, though. You shade here, because this is a sphere, and you shade it like a sphere, that's where the most white will be, right? Where it bumps up the most. No, not yet, not yet. We're starting with the eyes and the facial, like, we're starting with eyes, ears, noses, and then we go to face, then we go to body, stuff like that, right? I would, here, at this point, I would erase what I don't need. I would erase what I don't need like that. Still keeping an indication that the um, upper eyelid goes over the lower eyelid, because I think that's that shows an understanding of the eye, and I like how it looks, you know, it looks more three-dimensional as a guideline to keep it. I like to keep it, basically. And then, usually, let's move this a bit so we have more space to work with. Usually, it's sunken. It, like, you need to keep in mind that the um, eye sockets. Uh, I don't know if any of you have um, a uh, head, the a skull, a gyp skull, or any sort of skull you can buy. You should probably get one, you know, so you can draw off it, and then you understand better how to shade the sockets. But usually they're quite hollow, and the you have the beginning of the um, the nose walls, I guess, side walls here, and it goes. 
and then the eyebrow starts usually um, it's kind of rims it's kind of like the rim of the brow bone itself I, I think of it as you know how beauty gurus say the eyebrow is like the frame of the face it's more like the frame of the eye but it does help with everything for sure and it's like literally the frame of the brow bone in my opinion it, it usually wraps around here like that there's usually also a dip here for eye bags I guess hello guys if you have any questions please make sure in the chat to tag Miori at Miori and then I'll definitely see them how do you how long uh, how how do you have to learn to draw? You just take a pencil. You just take a pencil and try to uh, mimic life. Mimic life until you can mimic life to, to the extent where, that you can manipulate it. And convey your own vision. So yeah, usually there's a bit of shading here just because there's a meaty, meatier part but most times it's just this is the brow bone so we are just and you can tell this is the this is the eye socket this is this part all of this around it is where the donut the donut outline is bone okay this is the hollow and it's also where the eye, eye, eye socket is and i think it's more it's tinier a bit like that and that's basically you need to have a certain understanding of of the bone structure below the head that's what i recommend you do get a skull so you could draw are you going to explain the eyebrows too yes uh the eyebrows uh, thank you for asking Eyebrows always um, rim the brow bone, so you need to decide the shape of the brow bone, right? Uh, you could have, um, let's do this side. This brow bone could be a lot more high, higher, making for a straighter eyebrow, you know? But it always envelops, think about the shadow, uh, the um, volumes here, the forehead and because it always envelops around here for instance it envelops around you can play a lot with um, brow bones honestly they don't depend as much on um, the bone structure below only a very little extent honestly that's why you know you can shape them yourself right you can pluck in different shapes there's quite quite a variety but always make sure you think of it as you know it's supposed to um, wrap around like rim the brow bone are you using standard pencils from Photoshop uh, you can download the brush I use uh, by typing exclamation mark brush here how would uh, an eye from the profile look like when it's looking forward let's see so I start I mean I recommend you start with the circle from the profile, it would you would see a lot more of the waterline and a lot less of everything else. This is like again, it usually goes a bit like out towards the waterline. It usually goes a bit like that. You can separate it, the eyelids, and this will always go on. The upper eyelid will always go um, on top of the lower eyelid even from the profile view like that and then you add the the uh, crease the eye crease if you wanted to monolids are very beautiful you could keep it without that but without that lid um Depends how sunken in you want the eyes to be i don't particularly want that these eyes to be m very sunken in What opacity flow? Everything is set to pen pressure on this brush. Um, and then 
start shading at, at the further further from you and keep in mind that all of this all of this is a sphere right shaded like a sphere you would a sphere but obviously we do not care about things that are behind bone though they do not really help us so that's how I would look and looking front the thing about uh, the iris it's um, it does bump a bit I it does create a sort of it's not it doesn't flat out follow the shape of the uh, sphere the eyeball sphere right it goes a bit outwards it bumps like that and usually what it does with this is create it, its overlap with the inner inner outer inner um, waterline which is uh, let's see this bit so this bit in the inner of the eye that's the inner waterline right anyway it overlaps here as you can see and usually in most lights makes something darker so it seems like it's darker and also um, the iris right no, no the pupil from this side is usually <laughs> it just doesn't sit exactly you think you need to think about it as a 3d object as far as i observed which i'm not the best expert at this the iris has a, a, a layer of i don't know what to call it but then that that's where the um the iris is right but there's this watery sort of outer layer you can see it in cats very easily yeah basically uh, I always put the uh, iris looking a bit like in the towards the um, out this this side a wall of the uh, you know you know what I mean I, most people would put it I guess they would put it here I think from what I have observed from life it is usually placed more like this not as much far out you know because it doesn't sit on top it, it's inside the iris that, I hope that explains it the lens I guess so yeah cornea yeah exactly obviously my anatomy skills are rusty but the most important thing I can think of the, uh, to, to advise the people is you're sitting at a coffee you know table with your friend look at their eyes look how light hits their eyes look at the shapes and structures that are in their eyes just every single day while you're doing anything if you have an op the opportunity to study you know just look at it look at it carefully look at it with an investigative eye and it will help it will help tremendously um, from the profile looking forward I think this would be it and as for the brow bone again it's a, it's a structure like this and it goes darker like that it's it's a plane that comes forward right and you can see the plane this is the plane it it it's this is basically the darkest and then there's another plane here and here that wraps around you know so you shade this in a gradient and this in a gradient and this is where the brow bone is the most shiniest you know how makeup gurus put like highlighter there usually it's that's the place where you would put highlighter if you were um um you know makeup artist and the brow bone usually starts like that it literally envelops that you know once you decide where the brow bone is it usually envelops that but honestly not like this never mind obviously i made a mistake here um it would envelop it more like this from the profile right and this would be shorter so yeah it's possible that this would be like that i think this would be like that more shorter and you would add the nose here as you can see this eye is very open 
I would tweak it, definitely. But I think it illustrates what I'm trying to say. Any other questions? Painting an eye is pretty simple, usually. Um, you just do what I did here and you add more color to it. Uh, a lot of There's a lot of blue tones because the skin around the eye is thin and under the eye you have a big density of veins, right? Yeah, a lot of veins. So it will give up a more bluish tint. Do you, should I move on to painting? I'm not sure if I explained it enough. A lot of eyes do have a certain the bump here. There's always... This song was a good idea, for sure. The, the indication that there's always... there It goes further out of your head at the tear duct is always the fact that this is highlighted in most people's eyes. It does... I think the audience broke knows the song is the song. Anyway, <sighs> that's all we have to work with because it's free music this time. Oh well. Yeah, so I usually do try to make this up. For instance, I lit a bit less. Oh yeah, another thing to keep always in mind when you're trying to create eyes and movement. Um, the, the upper eyelid is the most mobile one, yeah? Uh, when you squint, when you make facial expressions, most of them will depend on the upper eyelid because it is the most uh, mobile one. Just like just like it's the opposite with your m mandible, mandible? You know, your, your uh, jaw, jaw, I guess. The jaw, the upper part of your bite is not as mobile as the lower part, it's the opposite with eyes, basically. I thought my speakers were broken, me too. Can you show us how you do Stella's versions of eye art in, in your recent illustrations? Uh, well, the thing is, yeah, this is more realistic eyes, I suppose. Realistic eyes. I mean, how I do eyes is usually just I enlarge them. I usually a lot of the things I do depend, I make very, the eyes I like most, so I do almond shaped eyes. I, I usually uh, start with the inner tear duct like this. I just press harder in some places to create the illusion of the inner tear duct. And then, and then I add a lot of detail after right I add this after I reshape and tweak uh, this shape after so it's more circular so it gives the illusion of more of a you know eyeball behind it all you know and then I add the eyelids my my style doesn't stylize the eyes that much I, I, I think honestly I just make them very big I do this a lot And I definitely accentuate brow bones. I, I happen to really love brow bones. The bigger the better. So I do a su su certain thing like this. And then I do the brows how I like them usually. You know, the best, the most important parts of the eyebrow are where it ends and where it begins. This whole thing here, this whole middle section, could be any shape you want it to be. So play with it. Uh, you just need to have like keep in mind that it shouldn't end too you know I mean, honestly it could end anywhere but as long as it does follow a certain guide of the bar brow bone right keep that in mind yeah any other questions do let me know and otherwise we could start painting it maybe um yeah see i'd go in a bit more here because again from even from the background i don't know if i conveyed this properly the the lower eyelid would be less further out. Will come less further out than the inner, right? So I don't think I convey this properly here. But it would go start something like that. 
with the lower eyelid coming out like you know from the profile this would be a lot in front of it and like that yeah uh, it, it, this will always be a bit muted try to make sure you make room for the tear duct it's usually its own little structure here unless you're doing more um, almond eyes sometimes it the inner tear duct can like can be entirely covered by the upper eyelid which is eyes like this right let me just see this eye we're seeing it from a different angle so you need to keep in mind which angle you want that to be in order to to actually give off the right um impression with your eye and um oh maybe she's looking too up here maybe she ah obviously these are all female eyes for some reason um let me see so in this case as you can see the skin is pulling at the upper eyelid so it goes it goes a lot more and this sort of eyes usually have the uh, crease the uh, crease here instead of starting instead of the crease starting here which a lot of cauca caucasian eyes do eyes that tend to pull at the inner corner so that it covers the tear duct usually end up only having a, a double double eyelid i guess it's called here at the end see because it's followed the pull it's following the pull of it right the difference between male and female eyes no difference no difference at all none um eyelashes could be a difference but i know plenty of dudes that uh, have better eyelashes than any girl could ever hope for so yeah i definitely don't think there's much of a difference i mean if there is any at all uh, but if you do want to convey difference go with the whole like squarish shapes are tend to be associated more with masculine features and this goes for any everything you can draw bodies and everything if you tr go for more square shapes it will give a more masculine look if you go for more round shapes it will go give a more feminine look what i do here is obviously pretty feminine pretty rounded at all corners let's see if we could do a better male one like to convey the idea that this is a male eye i would do this is not necessarily true guys but just as a rule it always does this right there's shapes that are more boxy usually masculine shapes and stuff like that with eyes it's hard um usually men have very strong brow bones like protruding a lot of them you know brow bones are more enhanced on males than on females um you could always play with that maybe you could also maybe observe patterns in your own life with the people you have to deal with and see um i would if i wanted to create a male but kind of attractive eye i'd go for this shape which is usually what i go for i think maybe a bit less looking up just go for a more blocky shape see let me just create the eye here so you understand where why where i'm building it when you have enough practice just envisioning the eye is like the eyeball is enough and you'll be able to mold things on it but i would think a, a more sharp sort of eye would be a manlier eye less of an eyelid more of a this sort of eye, like crease you know not as rounded let's remove all this and a strong brow bone usually is what i'd go for a lot of shadow here because the eye brow bone that comes out will cast shadow back to the eye so basically this whole thing will be a bit more shaded 
it's not as open of an eye, you know? Not as open of an eye. And then the eyebrow is important to me. Let me just make sure this is separated enough. Okay. Yeah. The eyebrow, usually, eyebrows on on males are lower, closer to the eye than on females. So, and I'd go for like, I love big eyebrows anyway, but I'd go for like fluffy or, but kind of structured, you know? You don't want them to be all over the place. You want them to have some sort of order to the chaos, I suppose. Um, let me just, honestly, I think on males, usually the brow bone covers a lot more of the eye. So you end up getting this sort of shape a lot of the time. That's how I, and then you can just make eyebrows a bit more like looking as if they have strands and honestly, this is how I'd shade a male eye. But I don't think there's enough difference between male and female eyes, you know? But I would use some sort of small subconscious cues, like the blockier shapes, the more square, everything, to indicate that it's a male eye, but it could definitely just be a female eye too. I know a lot of beautiful girls with very um, square shaped eyes. It's one of the best shapes you could have as an eye, so with, uh, with to an eye. How do you color or shade an eye? Okay, let's go to that. Let me just let me just make sure I finish this. So see, it's looking. He's looking that way. Okay, um, how do you shade or color an eye? Let's go into painting it. That the eyes then. Mm. Um, do you want it to be in semi-profile or something? How do how do we do it? I how do I how I would paint it would be like this. I would start with you know where I want my to look. It's usually never head-on, but if you want me to do a head-on. My eyes usually always have, um, I mean, it's kind of true for most types of eyes that they go a bit up at the end of the eyes, but some uh, some don't, some, some point downwards. You can definitely choose your own type of eye, as in whatever character you want to convey. Usually, um, people with down the corners of their eyes down you tend to see more tame, you know, more um, friendly. Yeah. Do, do, do. I I would go for an eyelid, like a crease that I wanted. This is maybe a bit too pointy. I would definitely build this up. I how I paint is definitely not very. Uh, I don't care about oh this is a line, this is you know line art. This is color layer. That's not how I paint. I usually block in a shape. Try to make it work and then I go under that layer or over that layer, it doesn't really matter as long as you have a lower opacity brush and you can manipulate the colors, see? It, you blend over and it doesn't matter if it fades to me. It does not matter if it fades. Let's center this a bit more. Uh, usually, so now you kind of place the colors, right? Let's see. There's an obvious lighter part that is the eyeball itself. There is an obvious darker part that is this and this part of the crease. Honestly, usually like that. Usually there's like um, this sort of dark 
shadow. It's basically a shadow that is cast by the lid itself. A more sunken impression that it gives. And we can do this with like all the same color, just to block in some volumes. And then you can add more color to it because the skin... There, I have a good reference picture on how the skin is blue in some parts, uh, orange in some parts, yellow tinted in some parts. It's great. It's a good way. Knowing that is a good way to do give the impression of a live skin. Um, again, around the eye, I, I'd say a purpley color, especially here. Purpley color there. Here too. I think the eye is pretty purple. I think it goes a bit yellow at the tear duct though. Like that. And even here maybe. Um, hmm, maybe a bit red too. In some places. I know that a thin thin skin does catch light differently. So just put colors. I mean, I have an idea of where uh, blue tint tints are. Usually, uh, you know how um, boxers, when they they get a cut at the brow bone, they bleed a lot. That's because there's a lot of veins there. So in the brow bone, you can also make it tint like that. See, cooler tints there and cooler tints under the eye. Does the technique you are using for shading and such work on traditional drawings as well? Uh, yes, but you will have to be more mindful of your the where you place the color. It would have to be a bit more exact. You don't want to sacrifice too much of your, um, you know, under, under layer, right? It does definitely. So let's do it as if we were painting traditional then, okay? Because I do use my opacity maybe a bit too much. If I didn't use it, I would go like this. Let's pick this inner tear duct color. So I would I would place the color more precisely where I want it, as opposed to just smoothing it out everywhere. So I would do this. I would, if I were to use this this blue again, I would put it just here and just again this blue just here. I put it just there. It'd be a lot more precise. Usually, see, you put it exactly where you want it, and I think it goes a lot more saturated in the in inner crease. Just paint it as you want it, right? Exactly. Put the color exactly where you want to think of it as like chunks of color so yeah i'm trying not to use my opacity like this i'm trying not to do this sort of thing because you cannot do that very easily in traditional art for i mean i think you can do that maybe with some mediums but not very easily there's always there's also i think maybe bluish here maybe not bluish see what works right so you convey just blend um, here I think this would be a pinker color as we know the you know you see in your face the inner tear duct would be um, pinker in tone but not very saturated think of a fleshy pink for sure a fleshy pink would be maybe like this right and like place it exactly where you want it. Maybe you want to go a bit more baby pink, a bit warmer and a bit lighter in some places like there. See, just to convey a sort of sense of volume at the edges. Not everywhere needs this, but yeah. And honestly, I think my inner waterline is too thick. So I'm like reducing it where I see it to be too thick. And I'm trying to take the colors and maybe placing them exactly where I want them. 
to be. Yeah. I think here it would show a bit less than I made it show. I mean, it's good as a guideline, but you can definitely cover it up after, after you do it. Like that. Uh, I, the very most inner part. Also, may keep in mind that the eye, the eyeball has also red veins you know, on it. Would usually tend to give it a more, like a more pigmented look at the ends of it. Because that's where the red, red veins would be. So I would blend some of that in. For sure. And now just try to, cur uh, I, I think actually this whole chunk would be cool, like cooler tone, like I'm trying to make her now, more, more purple. And it would blend down here a bit more, like that. Create a sort of, you know, the thing we're prone to, which is under eye circles. You know, sometimes I think I read that because your veins are inflamed, not inflamed, but you know, dilated, that you get sometimes these circles. I think it's sharper here because it has more movement. You get its point of tension. I think this would contour more the shape of the eye than I made it, so I'm elevating it a bit. See, so so it does. Maybe with this color instead of the very light contrasty color I just used. And then blend it up a bit. Because it is part of it is part of the, the eye. So yeah. I'm thinking maybe this yellow bit shouldn't be quite on the actual lid. And a lot of the time I no noticed in photos I, I try to do of people, like, you know, portraits. I, I try to do picture of, of people. Their pictures show me that this is usually a lot darker here and quite saturated compared to the rest of the coloring. Creases tend to be a lot more saturated, I, I find. I have no real idea why, but... I assume because it's deep depth. The most you find that the deeper something is, the more dark the color it seems to be is. You know, like nostrils, super super dark because they're super super deep. Let me see. Make sure always that this eyelid is following a shape of an eye that is definitely wrapping around. You need to convey the the impression that it is wrapping around a 3D object, that it is itself a 3D object. So you would do it like this. If you do have any questions, do let me know. So I would actually see here, I think a lot of it is and then, yes, this eyelid will come cast a shadow. It will definitely cast a shadow. Um, let's also make sure this is this inner waterline is more defined. I would say a orangey, desaturated color maybe would fit better for this inner product. Maybe like that. Yeah, uh, make sure to add me, okay, guys? At me if you want to ask a question. It's really hard to keep up and I want to answer things that are relevant. So we can definitely add more to this tutorial. Just make sure you place everything exactly where you want it. Because this is like, despite you thinking, I mean, it's it probably seems like I'm shading. But this is more how I see it. It's more like placing the colors exactly where I want it to them and that means that goes the same for dark like shading colors like dark bits and lighter bits so this is a lighter bit i put it here this is a darker bit i put it here but i see them as chunks of color you know so this is i would count this as color planning and maybe some value planning too 
a lot of people have um let me just it's pinker tone here it goes the shadow here goes up and it goes quite high here too let me just it goes with a very much more saturated desaturated color here like that and the lighter bits do kind of come high up into the forehead this this whole thing will become the forehead and a lot of the time the forehead and the brow bone catch light in a in a straight sort of plane like this and you should always keep this in mind especially when you are trying to shade um, eyebrows because eyebrows have their own dimension they have they wrap around this see it will be lighter there darker again here but you need to keep in mind this I guess part of the anatomy of someone's head so you know how to convey you know how your brows could also have their own dimension I guess is what I'm saying I, I would make it dark because eyebrows don't they don't sheen this much unless they're very thin and the hairs are basically baby hairs but it does you know help regardless to keep this in mind and honestly this is the part what I was talking about this is where it goes actually darker let's make it a bit warmer so let's use the brow blind this is where it starts to be it starts to become the brow the nose the wall of the nose right it starts to do that so so this is one of the more sunken areas here and it think about it it casts shadows from the nose too it's a it's an important plane so the eyebrow the part of the eyebrow that is found there uh, you will see that it is most dark here. It will be most dark here. And again, usually a lot darker here. So it does seem like it wraps around again. It's a very important thing, you know? So you make the eye seem like it wraps around the skull structure that is beneath it. Inspiring. Like that. Um, I, I actually wouldn't have made this brow bone mm, eyebrow this eyebrow is so saturated but yeah so finishing the eye uh, there's eyelashes to, be, to, to keep in mind to bear in mind but I uh, let's just I think we need to give the impression that it's deeper here for sure like the crease because this is a very um, round eye um, so it's important that we shade it properly and that we see the point of tension which is the skin being pulled back by how round the eye is I guess um, I say I guess too much no, we don't need it to be that dark because we need to see the lid. And it starts to break apart the lid because the, there's no as much direction here. So you can convey, like, you can like shade a bit of little structures there, like wrinkles, I guess. But it's just skin, skin pleating, pleating, you know, pleats, right? Folds. There we go. And overall, this is dark. And here it will come out a bit too. The most, um, and when shading the this part here, there will be a sharper line, and it has more structure near the tear duct because it's supposed to shape um, around it. It has more purpose here, and it has less of less purpose here, there. 
Also, it tends to go a lot lighter here. There's um, the brow bone itself casts does cast some shadow, so you need to convey that also. And you will find that in picture, the lightest part of the eyelid will always be right here at the edge. That's where it will always be, unless some people do have it. Now this will for sure be the sharper sharpest edge and the lightest here, and it will indicate. That it's, co it's coming out and it will give you if you remember like if you observe this and you manage to convey it in your pieces it will give the eye a certain 3d effect i suppose let me just see where i should take it how far i should take it here i do think i uh, should probably not make it as just thin up the inner waterline here because I don't like it looking too weird you know too deep too I know again as for the inner tear duct shaded as if it is part of the lid it has its own little planes and shapes the eye you usually if you close up on an eye will see there's this the eyelids do separate here for sure make sure you keep the shape the shape of the eyeball needs to still seem like it goes on in a spherical sp spherical sort of way right in my eye, i think i could extend it a bit here uh and yeah again the rim of the eye usually it's its own plane you should probably indicate that this has a thickness it has it's it's a 3d object like this see this is where i started with and then i started painting and it obviously comes out a bit a lot more I would use a more desaturated color here. Man, this song is so great. How do I remove this? Okay, it shouldn't. I shouldn't bother us again. At the same time, this is where the cheek starts to begin. So you will see that at this point in the illustration, you will have to add pink tones like there. But it, we're a bit far from there. It usually does go a bit redder here too between the brows. And the nose of course will progressively make it also get redder at some of the points of redness in the skin. The blue points are around the eyes. Like this. Uh, there's also blue on this part of the cheek. This is saturated, and this part starts to go quite blue, quite desaturated. And by blue, I don't mean pure blue. I mean a more like a cooler toned, right? Think think of it, the base of the skin, and then from the base you make it cooler, right? You go make it go a bit more towards. It will almost never end up being blue, unless you're doing a hyper saturated piece. Um, it will always end up looking actually brownie, but if you put it alongside, alongside the other colors of the skin, you will see that it suddenly seems bluish in tone. That's that's you know that's why I do recommend color theory. It's because of these sort of things. Um, you should understand how colors react next to each other, because that's how you will be able to convey skin and paint skin the best. There's a point of tension here where it starts to go, you know, the nose starts to come out and there's like a, I guess, a corner, you know, because this is a plane. This is its own plane. 
and this is the corner of the plane. This in particular is the corner of the plane. So it will have more, you know, a more intense sort of shading to it. Definitely. And I think a lot of this is quite cool here in this part because it's still influent there's still a lot of light bouncing and I think this should be lighter here. Uh, as for the eyelids, uh, I guess we're doing the I guess this person oh yeah. Make sure you do convey that this um, brow bone is producing a shadow on the lid. It's important for it to seem to basically seem like it's going inside the um, crease. And you'll see that I only sh made the this sh um, throw shade on this side not on this side because it doesn't really like how the light is set up here especially uh, it's more like overall this whole thing is shaded you know it's more like overall all everything is here so you know be selective be observant when you when you draw portraits study humans because you will notice a pattern I guess it needs to be more shaded like that. Yes, quite. Just make it like it seem like it's its own little plane. Okay. Now the eyelashes. Uh, let's make this person, I guess, brunette that would convey more points it would add a bit of contrast to everything um, the eyelid eyelashes would start on this definitely not don't start them in the inner tear duct but I'm sure most people know this very well that's how I put eyelashes is individually I find it looks better if you do it like this and also, I try to group them. This is a tip for eyelash. Is it looks better if there's two next to each other grouped in a way, kind of like um, being caught, you know, tangled, kind of being tangled by each other, you know. And then like loose ones sometimes, and try to remember how it follows the shape of the eye for instance this one i put here shit <laughs> probably shouldn't should have done this on a new layer like i'm doing now so two in a group like that and then these ones that are towards the inner you know side of the eye towards the tear duct tend to be less long and more curled so they stay out of the way. And same goes here at the very end of the eye. They tend to be a lot less curled. And a lot more, um, I mean, a lot more curled. At least on my eyes. I'm not sure if this is the same for everyone. You know what? Just play with them. These are things you can definitely play with. But it's still very important that you give the impression that they follow a 3D shape. They're not defying any of that. I'd kind of work on them a lot more than this, but I think eyelashes are great and very important for femininity, you know, conveying femininity and all that. Let's flip it. Then maybe it will help. See, and this is better perspective here. It needs to go forward more. Look at that. And at the ends, 
make them a bit thicker because that's how they tend to be thicker at the ends at the yeah at the base is probably the thing I should be saying and then you know if you look up close to, to your eye you will never like they, they don't really place in a straight line only from afar it seems like a straight line you can you have some room to place them coming from a bunch of angles and the closer it gets to this part the more the eyelashes point towards you so you don't draw them as long even though they may be just as long but think about it as in, in perspective these are they don't seem as long in this angle right and yeah definitely make sure to add a bunch of mass at the base because otherwise they'll look a bit thin and sparse you don't want to draw all the individual lashes you just want to give the impression that they're separated and beautiful and more or less thick like that and they themselves the thicker they are the more likely they are to um, cast the shadow so do remember that if they are very thick if you do give your characters the illusion of fake eyelashes or eyelashes so thick they look like they're fake they will probably cast a bigger shadow than over the entire of eye right like that the thicker they are I imagine they're thicker than this but yeah And let's do the lower eyelashes. These are usually a lot more unruly. They go in every which way. For sure. And it's... Uh, they're less pretty, but usually uh, their lack of order does look appealing. So... It's probably good to convey it something like that and then we'll move on to the iris soon but yeah uh for the eyebrow let me just i'd add a bit more to their base because the base would be thicker there's a lot of baby eyelashes growing anyway so yeah make sure you make it as thick as you want to give a good impression i like them it. quite thick I have black hair. And as for the eyebrows, the hair growth patterns usually go vertical here and then think of them as like this. They go like this until they reach that. That's the pattern. That's always the pa almost always the pattern. Um, very few people have a deviation of this pattern. So following that pattern, we start with some vertical lines here and then think of them as leaning leaning back like this and until they follow exactly the shape we want and that's how they are and this is obviously very rough but we'll perfect it and you can always just inspire me just add a hair, strands of hair if you know say this person has long brow hairs right some people have dense short brow ha brown brow hairs which are basically the best i have long strands which means they move a lot and i have to you know Inspire. touch them up or something because the longer these strands are in the brow the more they're likely to just point down sometimes when you wake up and stuff like that um yeah They do furrow a lot at the beginning and they do tend to go and there's like s small little hairs like kind of like that there's hairs like that here and there's always hair like that here but the pattern is always kind of clear it always starts like this and it's and it goes like this it's 
it's the same pattern but they're not long hairs right so you need to do convey the illusion that there are multiple small hair that is that follow this pattern not just um you know long hairs that kind of you comb into this shape because that's missing the point okay i do not like them to be this detailed so i usually like mute down a lot but yeah It helps you understand a bit the form of the brows. Okay, now for the, I guess, iris, that's the last thing we have to do also. This here, I, I guess I didn't convey it properly. This is part of these two lids. So make sure you convey that. I didn't convey it very well, but let's try. And let's add eyelashes because there's eyelashes here too. Okay, let's flip it. And now let's do the iris. The iris should be probably blue. I like that she has brown hair. I like brown hair with blue eyes. So I think it's like a solid combination. It almost always works. How I paint it, I usually paint it with very, very, very softly. Like this. I don't want uh, harsh lines because I, I'm figuring out the shape as I go. I see the eye as having a shape within it, like that. And then another shape within it, which is the iris. They are more flat usually, but there's also this whole watery thing going on a lot on a lot of people's eyes the lighter bit let me just I know if you can see it in my drawing let me just fill this in like that and go darker that will help like that that's the water film I like to make them green nah this is good I like it I mean no this is good we're good we're good uh, there's like an it goes darker towards the middle and the middle is the iris which is um, let me just usually quite it's black is what it is it's black I don't really like you know I, my characters usually are stylized in such a way where I either sacrifice the pupil or I sacrifice a lot of the iris, so... But... Like that. And, um... You probably saw, have seen a lot of, uh, A lot of, um... Close-ups of eyes. There are a lot of structures within the eye. If we were to make this a lot greener and maybe a lot more hazily, we would see. Let's see. Let's make it a hazily eye, because why not? But honestly, just just go nuts. Um, it does tend to have a more saturated and darker rim. The rim of the eye is a lot darker usually on most if not all eyes kind of like that and then there's a there's a part of it that's a lot lighter right after and you blend it out I guess let's flip it I feel like this this uh, this eye is not particularly circular so I'm just gonna cut a bit of it with the brush I'm using which is the brush you can download uh, on my stream if you type exclamation mark brush mm, the same brush I'm using the only brush I use for most of my things paintings 
it does help to fizz out the edges. They're not sharp. Um, I feel like I kind of... Honestly, yeah. They're like that. And there's that little film of watery things that are, is always on the iris, right? I don't know how well I'm conveying it. And this might overcomplicate things. I do definitely recommend that you actually look into everything I'm saying. Um, try to see a close-up of a picture and notice the watery film that's corny, I guess. Some of you have called it, I'm not sure though. I just observe it, observe it on people I was talking to, like pictures and such. And then around the iris, it's usually a lot darker. And obviously the iris itself in my picture needs to be a very much darker. But there's so much room to play with eyes, like the actual iris, the more you can do with it. I mean, it's like a blank canvas. You can play with it as much as you want. Um, you could add stars in the eyes. You could stylize it. It's one of the most stylizable things, the actual iris, especially. Just a blank canvas, really. Just make sure you remember it's a shape that has a watery film over it. The uh, in the iris, the pupil will almost never look entirely black because again, there's a film over it. It will give the impression it's black or very dark, but not actually be that. And as an artist, you need to be aware of the difference between giving the impression of a black and actually having a black in your painting. I do recommend you avoid using black, honestly, at all costs. But yeah, because there's like you can go as dark as you want you know with any color but not quite black it will definitely it, black doesn't translate well in prints also so it will help in many many ways that. um and at this point honestly you can fizz out the edges a bit because unless you're wearing contact lenses the edges of your eye will not be very sharp. And then you can add the most fun part, I guess, which is highlights. That's how I would do it. You could obviously go a lot more realistic than this. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement in this. But I, you, I think it tells you a lot. Uh, there's also, you need to keep in mind that this um, eyeball is definitely itself a 3D shape and you should shade it. I, I would go for a shade, like um, this, the upper lid casts a very desaturated color on it, like that. And then from below, you'll see, uh, notice a lot of, it's a bit more saturated, but still on the gray side. And you'll see a lot of this. It starts like at the edge, like that. And then this become is part of the lower eyelid now. Kind of like that. And it's darker in the shaded parts than it is on the um, inner Inner waterline, I don't know what to call that part properly. And the light would be most most powerful there. And there. Overall here, right? Overall here is where the light would be most popular. You could even I would do this for instance. So Yeah, 
Any other questions? Do feel free to uh, add me in the in the chat, and I'll definitely um, try to do the eye in the particular way you want me to, so I can clarify maybe some some things. Uh, also, I I tend to do fix my mistakes as I go. I kind of find found the mistake at, right now, which is the inner tear duct was a bit too. Um, too out, too out protruding. It's more like that. Inspire me. Inspire me. It's more like that. What size canvas do you use? And a third 300 dpi? Yes, I do use 300 dpi. I this canvas size is 3000 3, by 5000. Uh, actually, 5,000 by 3,000, you know, horizontal. Okay, now that we've painted the eye and everything, what else do we do? Um, a way you can also show that there's hairs here is like just cutting in through a bit of the eyebrow here and then adding more just playing with that sort of technique Inspire. cutting and adding that's what I usually tend to do most I guess that's it guys I mean to be fair it's just the eyes so yeah if we're done you have nothing to do oh yeah make sure this here starts being a lot more saturated than I've made it yeah they got the very end. yeah yeah for sure um, some people use blue for highlights they must just follow the rule I mean they probably follow the rule of if your light is blue your shadows will be tinted warm right if you know if your light is let's see blue this is the highlight of the thing actually it works perfectly honestly in my piece because <laughs> all the shadows are so the light of my piece is blue like you said and the shadows are red toned right works perfectly for me so thankfully and you just basically from here change a bit the there's like a lot of mm, the hot cheekbone catches a lot of light and as you can see the the light is definitely blue and the uh, this is definitely a ready toned, red tinted, I guess. Never think of it as it, it has to be red, as in you have to go ahead and choose a red. You just have to give a tint of warm, a tint of cool, you know? That's why I prefer using cool and um, warm to describe it as instead of ready, red-ish and blue-ish because it might confuse people. I mean, they might think, oh, I, I need to go ahead and pick a blue obviously no no you probably just need to pick your fleshy color and desaturate it a bit or you know experiment what i do is usually pick a blue and then with very low opacity i just go over my base my base flesh uh, color and then color pick that and then undo and then use this you know and this might not seem like a blue blue tint here but if you go if you go here it's quite a blue tint compared to the thing I had, right? And honestly, I think I'd pick this for here. Yeah. So that's about it, I guess, guys. Any other questions about eyes? Any other way in which you may not understand eyes? 
it usually always helps if you do start with the eyeball because this is this is where the eyeball is and you just have to build around it it will help a lot No, I think that's correct. For most parts, for the most part. You gotta like, no, a bit. I don't know if that illustrates it exactly. That's more like a, a, a temp template, a reminder sort of picture. It's not as good of a reference as, as you'd like, honestly. Yeah. I don't, I don't see any more questions, so I'll just... So I'll just, so I'll just, you know, stop, I guess. This is the end. I'm fine if it's the end, just, you know, make sure you ask your question so we don't end before you, your question, your question is asked. Yeah, som sometimes you, it will help to highlight a bit here to define the brow bone shape. It's still, all, all of it is still in shadow, but within that shadow, you can also define some volumes. And usually, this whole thing usually goes up here to, to sculpt the forehead. And then this is more muted. Here. And here. And it mostly just highlights absolutely here. And then the rest of it is kind of too. Thank you guys. I hope I hope I hope it was useful. If you know, for next time we'll be doing another body part, probably the nose. And if you do have questions, you know, of how to draw it in specific angles and stuff like that, do let me know. Cool.